Thank you, Ms. Schakowsky. You recognize her five minutes. Thank you. First, let me apologize. I'm the ranking Democrat on a hearing that's going on uh, upstairs, and so I apologize that I missed your testimony. Um, given the importance of developing a, a, a Zika vaccine, hundreds of millions of federal dollars have been obligated to conduct uh, clinical trials. I understand there's 32 vaccine candidates that are being studied in the U.S., uh, and the U.S. government has helped to partially or fully fund a number of those vaccine candidates. So it's uh, my understanding also that the drug manufacturer, Sanofi, has received over $40 million from the U.S. Army to conduct a phase two trial for one of the vaccines with the possibility of accessing up to 130 million more in taxpayer funding for phase three trials. All told, nearly $300 million of federal, of federal dollars have been obligated for vaccine development to date. So stick with me for a minute. While it's critical that we develop and manufacture an effective vaccine to combat Zika virus, it's just as critical that the vaccine be available to everyone who needs it. I am also very concerned that Sanofi recently rejected the Army's request for a, quote, fair, unquote, price for the vaccine. Earlier this year, I led 10 of my House colleagues in sending a letter to the Army raising concerns about their plans to issue an exclusive license to Sanofi for the vaccine that U.S. taxpayers helped develop. In addition, Governor Edwards of Louisiana, one of the states, hit, the states that has hit largest, uh, hardest by the Zika virus, sent a letter to the Army that raised similar concerns. I'd like to ask unanimous consent to enter both of these letters into the record. Can we, can we review this? I'm assuming that would be okay with that objection. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Fauci, given the uh, enormous investment of taxpayer dollars into the development of a Zika vaccine, do you agree that we need to use every tool of the federal government to ensure that the vaccine is affordable? Uh, the answer to that question is yes, but um, it is a complicated issue, Congressman, as you well know, because we don't really have the mechanisms to influence pricing of a product, even products in which we make a major investment for the development of. Uh, certainly, we feel as scientists and public health officials that the work that we do in the development of vaccines should be available to everyone and anyone who needs it. So if you're asking, is that the answer to the question, it is absolutely, I feel, that we need to do that. Whether or not we have mechanisms in place right now to guarantee that, I don't think we do. But it is true, isn't it, that vaccines are most effective when the vast majority of uh, the public is immunized. So if, the, uh, if it's priced out of reach of, of many, won't this be a problem in getting control of the whole sure. disease? Yes, it would. Obviously, it would be. I mean, if, if you cannot vaccinate the people who need it, and as you're correctly said that a vaccine, particularly in an outbreak, situation is that the more people that get vaccinated, the more control you get over the outbreak. So I agree with you that it's essential to the extent that we can do that to vaccinate where appropriate as many people as we possibly can. It's just, it's just, it's just a big concern to me since the, the, uh, the, the Army actually um, said that they would not guarantee a, a fair price and yet we're prepared use taxpayer dollars to, to lay out uh, perhaps as much as $130 million right. um, to, to them, potentially, without any ability to, to control that. Um, let, let me just uh, raise another concern. It's, it's important also to remember the damaging impact that the um, repeal bill that just passed the, the House and uh, of, of, uh, of Obamacare and the Trump budget would have on Medicaid and our ability to respond to public health crises like another Zika outbreak. The per capita cap included in both the uh, tr in Trump care and the Trump budget would make it nearly impossible for states to expand services and the number of eligible individuals during a public health emergency as Michigan did during the, uh, the Flint water uh, crisis. 
Moreover, moreover, under a per capita cap, there is simply no way any state could provide access to a high-priced drug to all of its Medicaid beneficiaries. And depending on how the final Zika vaccine is priced, Medicaid programs could already face challenges in trying to pay for the drug, and those problems would only be compounded if Medicaid was drastically restructured, as Republicans have called for. As this committee investigates the public health response to the Zika virus and considers how we might prepare for future challenges, it's critical to remember the important role that Medicaid has played in responding to public health emergencies and the devastating effect that Republican proposals to cap Medicaid would have on our ability to respond to those emergencies. I yield back. <laughs>